So let's uh, continue our discussion on uh, what we're keeping in this uh, in the activation records for procedures and functions. Um, if we go back here, notice that we have something called uh, the dynamic chain pointer that, that points to the activation record of the previous uh, function on the stack. And here we say that the dynamic chain pointer, and in general every pointer to an activation record, points to a fixed area of the activation records, and, and usually a central area. Um, um, yeah, let me actually state something that I guess I didn't say before, that the order of these fields here is not fixed. I mean that this really depends on the application, or, or sorry, on the implementation of the of the given compiler. The the compiler is the one that uh, generates code that manages this uh, uh, activation record. So it's up to the implementation of whether the dynamic chain pointer is stored before the static chain pointer. Where are the parameters stored? Do they come before the um, local variables or after, and so on? So the, the the it's not important for our discussion that this the the particular order of the fields here. It's just important which fields we are storing in the in the activation record. So uh, we are talking about the dynamic chain pointer. Uh, and we're saying that uh, the pointer usually points to some fixed area of the activation record. Uh, the addresses of the different fields are therefore a, um, obtained by adding a negative or a positive offset to, this va to the value of this pointer. So, for example, let's, let's assume that the, the dynamic chain pointer points to... Uh, uh, this area here just after the uh, local uh, after the formal parameter then in order to access the local variables we need to add some positive uh, offset to this dynamic chain pointer so the first local variable will be stored in the very first say two bytes of this area the second local variable will be stored in the fourth byte say from the dynamic chain pointer and so on. So we're really using offsets from a pointer that points to some fixed area of this activation record. Uh, so the compiler what it does, it substitutes a reference to a local variable for addresses which are relative to a fixed position in the activation record for the block in which the variables are declared. So notice that the compiler uh, uh, does not store the names, and this is actually true for static scope, we will talk about this uh, later, the, 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 the really the difference in implementation between uh, static scope and dynamic scope, but let's say we're, we're using static scope, then there is no need to uh, store the name of the variable. So when we refer, when there's a reference to a local variable, then the compiler can figure out exactly where in memory that local variable will be at runtime. Because it uh, uses the uh, static chain pointer actually, and then a fixed position from that pointer. And this is possible because the position of a decla declaration inside a procedure or function is, is fixed statically. Uh, what we mean by that is inside a function like f, if we have int y and int z, then int y will be the first one in, in, in the memory for the local variables, z will be the next one. So for the activation record for f, in the local variables uh, space here, uh, x will be th the very first two bytes, say, uh, z will be the next two bytes, or, or was it y? Yeah, y is the first two and z is the next two and so on. So the compiler can 
if it has a pointer to a fixed area in the activation record, then it can access the variables using an offset from this pointer. So this was how it would access uh, local variables. Uh, and, uh, yeah, sorry, when, when I said earlier that it's using the static chain pointer, that's not true. I mean, because we were talking about the local variables, if we're talking about the local variables, the variables are inside the activation record. We don't have to go to another activation record. This is only true for non-local variables. In that case, we use the static chain pointer to find the... Uh, memory for uh, variables and we ha don't have to store the names as before uh, so we don't have to do any runtime uh, uh, search based on the names we can follow the static chain pointer to the correct activation record and then we can use an offset from the uh, static chain pointer to find the uh, correct non-local variables. How this is done is something that we haven't talked about at this point, but we will talk about it. It's just important to know at this point that we don't have to store the names inside the activation record. We can always use this offset from some pointer. And we can use the offset because the order of the variables uh, is, uh, is fixed. We can see the order at compile time. It is really just the order in which uh, the variables are declared. If y is declared before set, then y will come before set in the activation record for f. So, uh, here we have a picture of... Um, uh, a situation where we have many activation, activation records of the stack. This is the start of the stack here. We have uh, uh, many activation records. We have a dynamic pointer in each activation record that points to the previous activation record on the stack. And if we follow these dynamic chain pointers, uh, sorry, uh, if we f follow these dynamic pointers, we have something called a dynamic chain. We can have, we can follow the dynamic pointers, and we have something called a dynamic chain. Then we have an activation record pointer that points to the current activation record, the one that is at uh, at the top of the stack. And we also have a, a top pointer that points to uh, the uh, end of the current activation records and that actually signals where the free memory is so when we will allocate a new activation record it starts where the point where the stack pointer points to so there's this difference between the stack pointer here that points to the top of the stack really where the where we can allocate the next activation record and then we have an activation record pointer that points to the current to a fixed area of the current activation record. So, uh, we have already said this, that the activation records are stored and removed from the stack at runtime. So when we enter a function or procedure or block, we push an activation record on the stack, and when we exit the block or the procedure, we pop it off. And we have also mentioned what the caller is. The caller is the program or procedure that performs the call, and the callee is the procedure that uh, is being called. So we said here that main is the caller in this statement, and f is the callee. f is the callee, the one that is being called. Now, this... Um, management that we have been talking about, the stack management, uh, all this detail about uh, these different fields in the activation record is something that has to be handled at uh, runtime or managed at runtime. And this is actually performed both by the caller and by the callee. Uh, 
and we have different terms here. We have something that is called a calling sequence. This is a piece of code that is inserted into the caller and by whom? Well, the compiler. The compiler is the one that generates this code and this is inserted into the caller to be executed in part before the procedure call and also in part after the call. And this is important to understand that uh, to manage this uh, functionality, all, all the things that, 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 that should happen at runtime when we call a function or we, we enter a block, uh, this is managed or this, is, uh, this code is, is generated by the compiler. We as programmers, we don't have to worry about this. Uh, it's just important for us to understand what's happening because it really can make us better programmers if we understand what happens at runtime. Uh, so there is something called a calling sequence here uh, and uh, that's code inserted into the caller. Then we have something called a prolog which is a piece of code to be executed by the callee immediately after the call. So the caller has some code that is associated with a function call like this and the callee also has some code that is executed immediately when f call uh, when f th when the execution of f, of f starts and it also has something called an epilogue which is a piece of code uh, that is executed by the callee when the procedure ends so when f ends here and does a return there's some code that is called an epilogue that is executed this exact division of what the caller does and what the callee does depends again on the implementation. You know, that's different between languages. It's different between the compilers. So this is very specific. And we don't have to think about ex uh, 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 ex the exact, exact division here because um, it, can, it can vary. But it's, it's nevertheless important to understand the, the, the big picture here what what ha really happens here what are the, what are some of the things that happens in this calling sequence um, and in the prologue and the epilogue without going into the nitty-gritty detail so if we just uh, think about the calling sequence and the prologue now remember the calling sequence is something that that happens uh, in the caller both before it makes the call and after it the call has finished and the prologue is something that happens inside the callee at the very start. So one of the things that need to be done is, is to modify the program counter and we have actually talked about this. Uh, we need to be able to pass the control to the call procedure because like in our case here when we call the function f we need to be uh, there's, there's going to be a jump in the machine code to the first statement inside f. And the program counter is the one that keeps that stores the the next instruction to be executed. So we need to modify the program counter. The old value must be saved. The old value uh, the old value incremented. So the next statement after we call after the function f has executed, uh, the next statement needs to be executed then, and that needs to be saved somewhere. The old the this incremented value the old value of the program counter incremented to the next statement. Uh, then uh, there is some allocation of the stack space. We need to allocate space for this new activation record. Uh, and that means uh, there's going to be an update uh, to the pointer, uh, to the top of stack pointer. So when a new activation record is put onto the stack here, the, the stack pointer will point to the next free memory area. So it's obvious that the stack, top stack pointer needs to be modified. Uh, we need to modify the activation record pointer because that one must point to the new activation record for the called procedure. Once again, we go back to our picture. We're talking about this record pointer here, activation record pointer. It now has to point to the new activation record that we just uh, allocated on the stack. Uh, there's going to be some parameter passing. We need to be p p uh, pass parameters from the caller to the 
uh, activation record of the callee. We need to save registers. Remember we said earlier that there's some information that is kept in register that uh, keeps track of the state of the machine, values of uh, uh, some uh, uh, there are some there are some state information kept in registers and that needs to be saved and uh, there is uh, in some cases there is execution of of initialization code so there might be some languages that require some explicit constructs to initialize some items that are stored in the new activation record and when would you when would you do that well you would do that then in the say in the prolog code now then we look at what happens after the call and that's performed partly by the calling sequence and also by the epilogue epilogue is the code that is executed uh, just before the the function has uh, finished. We need to update the program counter because we have to able be able to return uh, to the caller. So remember we we saved the instruction we saved the instruction of this statement here before we called function f and then once f f the function f has executed we can retrieve that instruction and jump to the correct statement. Basically, we have to jump in the machine code to the this uh, statement for for uh, uh, to the memory address for this statement here. Uh, we need to return the value of a function, and we said earlier that that uh, return value is often kept in the uh, activation record for the one for the caller, and so the callee has to put the correct value into the um, activation record for the caller. We need to return or, or uh, the v uh, return the value of the previously saved registered. We have to basically we have to restore the values of the registered uh, because the registered had some values before the call that need to be restored. We might have to execute some finalization code that might be the case that some languages require that some f finalization code is uh, is run after uh, before the local objects can be destroyed and then finally we must deallocate the stack space so the activation record of the procedure which has terminated this must be removed from the stack and the top pointer also must be modified once again if we look at our picture if if this is the current activation record or say that the current activation record points to this uh, activation record here that we had earlier allocated then once the function that has uh, that is associated for this with this uh, activation record finishes then the activation record must point back to where it pointed earlier and the top of point stacker is not anymore he down here it must be up here denoting what where is the free memory area of the stack so you can see there is a there's a lot of things that like a bookkeeping inf uh, that ha needs to be carried out but uh, the uh, the the important thing this is that uh, this is this is code that is generated by the compiler that really keeps that makes this makes everything work as I said earlier we do not have to think about this we don't have to worry about this I mean we as programmers do not of course generate this code it's the function of the compiler to generate the code and make sure that all these bookkeeping things will happen correctly at runtime and just to finish uh, it should be noted that in our discussion here we have omitted uh, the handling of uh, the uh, data structures that are necessary for the implementation of scope rules, but that's something we'll cover later. Remember, we haven't really talked about the static chain pointer. <laughs>